Welcome to the Electric Fan Cave Extra. Ooh, YouTube only, y'all. Where we're going to talk about Walking Dead and the season finale that occurred last night. And super confuse me because I have only watched three episodes this season. The last three. So first, Heather, you are super excited about this. Yeah, it was great. I was so happy. It was so good. <laughs> this was what you were wanting. Yes. The whole season, most of the season, I only liked really three episodes, including last night's. Okay. The one was the Daryl and Beth episode. Mm -hmm. I did not give you the finger. The other <laughs> was Thank you. Carol and the little girls. Yes. And then last night. Okay. I could have done without the entire rest of the season. Like, right. It didn't do anything for me. So that's good. I'm two for three on the episodes that you liked this season. Yeah. And last night, I, and you know that I have really, really, really disliked Rick ever since mm -hmm. he made a terrible decision and yep. was super hypocritical. And last night, I fell back in love with Rick. Yeah, which was funny because as I was watching it, I was questioning. I was like, is this I couldn't tell, like, when you're watching someone, like, rip someone's throat out of their body with their teeth, if that's going to be the thing that endears them to you, <laughs> or if you're like, oh, dude, no, that's because it. No, I, I knew that there was going to be a confrontation with that group, because they've right. been leading up to it yeah, all, they had to be. all season, and and you know that they're bad people because they were talking about raping Michonne, and right. they kill each other yeah. a lot. Yeah, just for um, breaking their weird, arbitrary rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when they come, you know it's going to be bad, and you know that you just saw Rick all bloody, but you didn't see anyone else around him. So right. you don't know who died and with the flashback. You know what I'm mm -hmm, talking about? Mm -hmm. So, and then Daryl comes, and I'm always scared that something's going to happen to Daryl because I'm fiercely loyal to characters, like yes. fiercely loyal to characters, and I know that if something happens to Daryl, I probably won't watch the show anymore. Right. And this is, okay, here's, I do want to, if we can break and you'll be able to hold your thought. Do you need to finish yeah. the thought or? No, no. Okay. Just hold it for one moment. Okay. Keep in mind, I've only really seen season one and a little bit of season two. At what point do we start loving Daryl? Because I know he is like the favorite character. On season all two. Of Walking Dead. Season two. Okay. And why? Oh, okay. Because okay. I learned last night they're brothers. They're not real brothers. No, I know that. Okay. <laughs> I understand <laughs> what was meant by that figure of okay. speech. No, in season Merle. two, uh, Sophia is Carol's daughter. Mm -hmm. And Sophia gets lost. Right. And everyone is kind of preoccupied with their own thing. And, and they're, they're worried about Sophia. But it's not really a priority to them. And Daryl is the one that keeps going and looking for her. Oh, and... Okay. Through those um, solitary journeys, there's a lot of character development for him. And uh, the difference between Daryl and everyone else is everyone else is learning how to survive with the zombie apocalypse. Mm -hmm. Daryl could survive on his own. He right. always could. His journey is learning how to survive with people and learning how mm -hmm. to trust. And mm -hmm. that's when season two is when he starts – having to depend on them and having them depend on him and adjusting to that. Right. And there's a scene um, where he goes out and looks for Sophia and he gets shot by Andrea, who I hated. And <laughs> he, he's in bed and Carol comes in and she tells him, you're just as good as them. And he doesn't want to hear it. And she's like, right. you're just as good as they are. You're a good person. And then after that, it just that's where Daryl kind of grows, you know? Okay. Yeah. That's good. Now I feel like I get it. Good He's explanation. Really good. Yeah. Okay. So finish your thought then. Okay. So then Daryl comes and of course he steps in because he's Daryl and he's a good person yeah. and they start beating him up and it's a season finale. You know, they love killing people in right. this show. Yeah. And I was getting so distressed and yeah. everyone had someone guarding them mm -hmm. and I was like, do something. Do I really yell at my TV. Yeah. Like, do something, Rick. Do something. And then 
the guy starts trying to rape his son and I'm like, snap, Rick, snap. Like yeah. I'm yelling, snap, snap. Because I want him to go crazy. And yeah. then he did. Oh, and, I was and like, he did. Yes. Yeah. I was so happy. I was so happy. He delivered on the cray. Hit him, hit him. And then, and then he gets up and he, he spoiler, he bites his neck open. And I'm like, yes. Like I was so happy about it. And then he stabs the rape, the guy who was trying to rape his kid. And I'm like, you will rape somebody's son. And I'm like, go Rick, stab him, stab him, stab him. And then I loved him. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. And then we see sort of like, um, which is psycho, I swear. (laughs) I think given the circumstances, you're supposed to sort of be rooting for that. But on Talking Dead, they sort of addressed that. Like, like this is disturbing and sort of out of right field, but it's also sort of a return of like Rick, you know? Yeah. Um, But you have like, okay, so for one thing, what's the place that they go to called the... Terminus. Terminus, right. Which clearly, like, they don't even give you a second to think this is too good to be true. It's like immediately like, oh, this is effed up, whatever is happening in here. You have this theory about cannibalism? Yeah. In Terminus? Okay, I missed that. So why don't, like, I don't, I didn't see it happening per se, but I liked what you were saying. Explain the whole cattle theory. I, in case people are wondering how I even am getting this, I am, last night, Heather was playing Hearthstone or Hearthstone, depending on your dialect. Um, And uh, she and Robert were discussing this. So, of course, I had to listen to get some idea of what to talk about today. Um, And so she has a theory about this cannibalism in Terminus, which if you read the comic book, I'm sure you know one way or another what happens. But tell me tell me all your thoughts on this. Well, okay. In the Terminus, I don't think is actually in the in the, the novel, book, graphic novel. But okay. there is a group of hunters who are cannibals. Oh, okay. So they, so I think that maybe they're tying this is that what in. They've, yeah, they've put them together. Because well, what Robert said last night was true. If there's all these signs for Terminus saying "Come here, it's a safe haven. Everyone who arrives survives," right? Mm-hmm. That place should be packed with right. people. Yeah, that's. True. And there's like twenty people. Yeah. So you're wondering, and we know Maggie and Glenn and all of them are there, and we don't see them right away. Yeah. <clears throat> and they're wearing their stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have Glenn's watch. Mm-hmm. They have Maggie's poncho. Um, and when they come, both times, there's a woman cooking up slabs of meat. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'll make you a plate. <laughs> and there's no people. Yeah. So when they're running, they're being herded, mm-hmm. but with because they could shoot them at any time. They obviously That's they had true, people yeah. on the roof and they're being herded and they pass this tarp with human remains on it. And it's not just like an arm and a leg, it's bones. So mm. the bones have been stripped. Yeah. And then they get herded into this train car and he looks down and there's powdered milk containers. So it to me it makes sense that they're feeding them powdered milk to keep them alive mm-hmm. and then they cook them and you keep them in a car and they get tender when you don't move when meat can't move yeah it gets soft yeah so that's my theory that's creeptastic and i think that's a that's a really good plot turn personally that's the kind of thing that would keep me watching on twitter every because beth disappeared a couple episodes back she's the little blonde girl that was with daryl yeah she got kidnapped Mm mm-hmm and we don't know what yeah. happened to her. Yeah, and he says, like, and then she was just gone, right? And she was just gone. Yeah. And so all on Twitter, there people made pictures of the woman with the meat. And they were like, would you like a side of Beth or something? Or this oh, Beth God. tastes great. And, and I was like, no! no. So I really hope that's not what happened to Beth. Oh, gosh. I'm sure they'll address it if that is, but... That's crazy. And I loved the the snare part in the beginning. Did uh, you see that? I'm sure I did, but remind me. Rick was teaching Carl and Michonne how to make a snare. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I remember that. And he's like, you have to make like a little path so that they can the prey can only run through this path and then they get trapped. And that's mm, exactly that's, what yeah. happens to them at Terminus. Aha. Uh-huh. Interesting. You're good at noticing this stuff. I like it. 
<laughs> no, it's good. I think this it's it's interesting. I like that sort of parallel between the beginning and end of the episode. And I think, you know, as far as plot devices go, being herded like cattle into this place that's supposed to be a safe haven and finding out it's like that to serve man episode of Twilight Zone. That's good drama. Yeah. Especially and like Rick realizing like what is happening here uh his sort of resolve to be like oh hell nah he was like when he had the guy and he had the gun on him he's like where's our people i was like rick (laughs) you're back (laughs) right yeah so the way he talks did he always talk like that like he's like batman (laughs) (laughs) that's just when he's angry (laughs) it's like every time he talked to him somebody's like yeah Uh, that's just like his Hyper masculine, Rick. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, as and again, he referred in Talking Dead to being like the super alpha male, and why you know him and uh, Daryl having that brother exchange oh. was like the ultimate form of expressing love between two alpha males. Like they weren't gonna hug it out; they're just gonna be like, "Yeah, you're my brother." Yeah. Cool. That part is really significant, though. Yeah. Like super because of. Daryl's relationship with his actual brother who died, mm-hmm. uh, who was killed in season no. I know, and that was one of the reasons, like, one of the reasons I had trouble picking the show back up was because I follow Michael Rooker on Facebook and the freaking guy posts his death on Facebook the day it happened. It was a really good death, though. But you don't tell me that day <laughs> that it happened. What if I'm behind a couple episodes? <laughs> For real? That's a big thing for him. He was yeah. leaving the show. And yeah. it was a it was a great, great episode. It's one of the best. It, what season is best. that? Season three. That's what I thought. Sounds about right. And then the old fella, what's his name? Herschel. Herschel. He was killed by the governor? Yeah, he was With decapitated. Sh- okay. Yeah. I also saw that on Twitter, but that was you know, long enough later that I was like, okay, I've already stopped watching this, but... My mom, she's... I, I watch Walking Dead with my mom a lot mm-hmm. because we're, just, like, super into it. Um, <laughs> she's like, I miss Herschel. I was like, I miss Dale because Dale got... Dale was killed season two. He was the older man. Yeah. Herschel's essentially... They're the same They're the same sort of this in the is, show. Yeah, this is me realizing right now that's not the same person. Oh, <laughs> see? They they were both the voice of reason, yeah. kind of like a mentor, the moral <laughs> compass. And I was like, I miss Dale. And she's like, I didn't like Dale. And I was like, they're the they're same. same. <laughs> you can tell her your podcasting partner didn't even know they weren't the same dude. <laughs> That's how the same they are. They're the same. Uh, she's like, well, I like Herschel better. I was like, Okay. That's that's fine. All right, mom. Everyone's entitled to be wrong, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I also liked when they were talking about like how good it was to have him back on, and like you know they're all taking selfies and all that kind of stuff. You gotta love like. Well, I've watched other behind the scenes things about Walking Dead, and they've talked about how like they film in Georgia, right? And it's just like outrageously hot and uncomfortable. And it's yeah. like you're basically it's like going to war with people. You know? <laughs> you're just in these horrible, uncomfortable situations. What are you going to do but become super, super close? So I always appreciate casts that are like that. Me too. I, I just they just. Yeah. They seem I like love them. A lot of fun. But yeah. now like um, I, I consider watching the next season and maybe even catching up on the other ones. You should, or I can just give you the good episodes to watch. That's true. You should give me, like, a, you know, here's the key thing, and then I can just watch those. Yeah. And then it'll be good. I was just so confused with, like, the, like, flashback. Not the flashback, but the, you know, in the beginning when they, like, give you the, like, previously on Walking Dead, and it was, like, the entire season slash, I think, end of last season. I was like... I freaked out when they started playing the episode. I was freaking out because I thought, I'm like, they're playing the wrong episode. I don't remember what episode this is, but this is not where we are in the story. We're not still at the prison. And I was like, they're playing the wrong thing. And, and oh, that's so like happy. the time I went to see Harry Potter and they started playing the zookeeper instead. 
<laughs> did you freak out? We did. We freaked out. So I get it. <laughs> totally get it. Yeah. Which also, like, that whole thing confused me to not being actively watching the show because I was like, wait, which part of this is the flashback and which part is happening now? <laughs> like, I'm so confused by what is going on. I figured it out within, like, the first two flashes or whatever, but... Yeah. You know, it was... It was enjoyable. I liked it. I liked that episode. And people yeah. were very upset with the cheesy line at the end. The, he was like, when they're he... screwing with the wrong people. Eh. But know, that's not, they it. couldn't say the F word. Right, exactly. It's comic. like, let's consider the limitations of, you know, AMC or whatever. Um, although, don't they, they've dropped the F bomb a couple times on um, Mad Men now. Oh, uh, I don't know yeah. what that is. It's weird. It always it's throws me off. It's also weird that they can show someone's neck getting bitten open, but they can't say one curse. Right. Yeah. So we've got sort of weird standards as to what is obscene and what isn't on there. I spend half this show like this, but <laughs> apparently I can't handle an F bomb. Exactly. <laughs> I, did you see in Talking Dead when, when he was talking about the chicken? Yes. Ugh, the raw chicken. He was so funny. I didn't know where he was going with it. He's like, so I picked the raw chicken. Oh, no, he's British. I picked the... Nope, not doing it. <laughs> do it, Evan, do it. I can't. I can't do it. He has such a good, subtle accent, too. I mean, like, it's it's there. It's not like it's... You know, but there's something about the way he talks that I just absolutely love. He's so, like, sort of chill and, you know, talking about the guy belching and things like that. I just love Andrew Lincoln. I have loved him for like ten years now. I, just I feel like him. you would have been that girl with the cards. With the cards. Did you see? Did you see the viewer when, they, when she was asking him a question? Then. No, I missed it. She asked him questions using cards. Oh, like in Love Actually. And then she's like, she's like, even though it's not Christmas, you're perfect to me, or something. <laughs> and he was like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> I love that girl. She's brilliant. I feel like that was him. you. You need, yeah. That's that would be something I would definitely do. Um, although I don't know. Once I was on like this Aloha to Lost show, and they picked me to ask a question of the cast, and when I stood up, I nearly couldn't actually say anything. So <laughs> I don't know if I really would have been able to pull off the whole. Is this on TV thing. somewhere? It was a long time ago, but I think like because it was like just an episode thing, like you you couldn't really find it at this point. <laughs> but yeah, I asked a question of the cast of Lost and I was just like uh, <laughs> Again, I'm better at this now. <laughs> at the time, not so good. But my favorite character did tell me he loved my hair, so uh, it was a victory. That Daniel a Faraday. Victory. I don't know. You didn't watch Lost. I watched some of Lost. That's fair. You but... probably didn't watch long enough to know who Daniel Faraday was. He came in the helicopter. Does that ring any bells? What What With does he Charlotte. look like? He's okay. You've seen Twister, right? Yeah. He's like the squirrely little brunette guy in Twister. Um, he came to the island with the ginger girl Charlotte and Lupitas, with the blue eyes. In a helicopter. And then the flash side. Okay, well. <laughs> you may not have gotten that far. He was my favorite. Yeah, no. Did you see, by the way, I don't know if this is going to go on, but did you see the voices of the Ninja Turtles? Did I see, like, did who you, plays the them? voice actors, like, in no. the movie? You should look it up later. It's wild. It's <laughs> Especially Splinter. Why don't you just tell me? Because I don't know their name. Oh, okay, that's fair. Okay, I will look up who these voice actors are and all of you at home you're on your own kids <laughs> <laughs> Heather doesn't remember names i'm sorry that's that's fine um so any final thoughts on walking dead it was awesome and i can't wait till october and i'm so excited again and I'm, i feel time. good about loving it again I'm yay happy. i feel happy about that me too and next season in october Maybe I will have caught up enough Craig that Heather and I will it. be able to, like, legit disco like discuss this. Yeah. We'll see. 
Electric Fan Cave episode 8 billion. <laughs> It'll, It'll be, be a really good episode. It will be. <laughs> All right. Peace out. Hope you've enjoyed this Fan Cave extra, everybody. From, uh, you know, me, Corey. And me, Heather. Meh. Meh. <laughs>